on an intent. Doing a mitzvah, as the Alter Rebbe says, without intent is like a body without a soul. Doing it... Um, one second. Okay. Doing it with intent is a soul. And as we explain that it is, what does that mean? Or, of course, it's a more of illuminated mitzvah, but it's not become internet connection. Are you having a problem? Is there a problem? Hmm. Okay. I hope. To. Um. So, the Alter Rebbe concludes like this. Remember we said that there's four dimensions of creation based on the four-letter uh, name of God. The highest, Yud and Ahe and Avav and Ahe. Yud is the primary source of human life. The Ahe in God's name is the primary source of animal life. The Vav is vegetation. And the latter hay is inanimate. So the Alter Rebbe explains that when it comes to intent and the act of the mitzvah, it also is exemplified in this name of God, the four levels of creation. So, when we do a mitzvah that is just the action of the mitzvah without intent, without any, you know, spiritual awareness of what the mitzvah is about, and so on, and the idea that you're deeply being connected with God through the act of the mitzvah, it's from the inanimate world. If it's done without intent, but it's verbalized, that mitzvah, for example, prayer, right? Excuse me. Then it's of the vegetation world. Because there's still some growth there. The very fact that you verbalize something, right? And it's not just an action. Then... Um, there is some growth like vegetation. Now, the next two levels are the levels of intent that are between an animal and a human being. So, an animal does things out of, um, of instinctually, and a human being uses its intellect. So, the Alter explains. When an individual will meditate very deeply upon Okay. Hold on to it, folks. I'm going to change positioning. Okay, it should be better here. Okay, sorry. Is it, that should be better now. And you got a picture behind you. Nice Hasidic picture. So an individual, their virtue is, or a virtue, over the animal kingdom is intel intelligence. That our intelligence can feed our heart and gives us heartfelt um, love and awe towards God. So when a person can um, use their mind to understand the greatness of God, your relationship with God, the importance and the value of God. God is creator. Understanding the 
Seder is is the order of the creative process. And that feeds your heart. That now you have a strong desire to cleave to God. Then, that is an intent that is analogous to the human being. The intent is analogous to an animal is an animal is uh, instinctual. Well, the human being also, we have something instinctual, a love and awe of God. We, and that is because we arouse the hidden love that's in our soul. The first one we created through our understanding, it feeds our heart. So that's a real ownership. That's a real, that's something real that we develop. That it's ours, it's our understanding, our appreciation. The second one also takes some kind of meditation, some kind of preparedness. But what you're revealing is your natural love, the avamusateris, the hidden love that's in the divine soul. All you're doing it is allowing it to emerge. And sometimes that can just bring you to do, you know, what you got to do. So in prayer, for example, you're going to pray with the intent of, you know, you're connecting to God. And you're going to say the words and you're going to just, you know, appreciate the meaning of the words. Are you going to feel a deep, you know, love and awe of God? No. Because when you reveal the hidden love, the hidden love is the desire that's in our soul to be connected to God. It doesn't have to express itself in fiery, passionate, you know, kind of love. It actually doesn't. It's a love that's natural. It's there. Uh, to put this into, uh, this, the alternative doesn't do this, but I'm going to do this, to so put it into human context, human terms, and we may be appreciated. A natural love is like between siblings. There's a natural bond. There's a natural comfort level. There's a natural love. Um, it's just, it's there. But then there's between husband and wife. The love that should be there is not just a love that's there. There has to be a fire to it. There has to be a passion to it. Now, the passion doesn't have to, doesn't mean every time, every moment there's a passion. But in the relationship, there has to be a passion. It has to be a, some kind of fire. Why? Because inherently you're really separate and you're, you know, two people coming together that are separate. So that creates a passion. A passion is like there's a separateness and a desire to come closer. So with the first kind of love that we spoke about that's based on intelligence and you understanding. So it's you, the finite individual, is understanding the infinite God, again, as best as one can. Um, and um, I'm just making sure that everything's okay now. Yeah, it looks like. Okay, looks better now. So, um, because there's such a, a spasm, such a, a wide gap, finite and infinite, so it creates this passion, a desire to cleave, and the more you understand the greatness of God, the more you have that love and awe of God that you want to cleave to God. Right, again, that's, an, that's a kavana, intent, that is something that you kind of own because of your in-depth appreciation and understanding of whatever matter it is that you are understanding of godliness. But then there is understanding, appreciating, and there's got to be some kind of meditation, some kind of a thinking process over here about the mitzvah, about God, about you know what you're engaged in, what mitzvah you're engaged in. But it's not... Um, it, it's only producing something that's there already, an inherent love. So an inherent love doesn't create a, a fiery passion, just like between siblings. You know, it's a natural love that's there. 
just needs to be revealed, our natural love that we have with God. Those are the two levels of intent. And with that, we conclude. Uh, chapter 38. So, what's our take home for the times that we're living in? Good question. If we recognize that what's going on around us and we, are met, we think about the, the world that we live in right now and how the world has changed. So if we really think you know, more deeply into it, um, which I'm talking to myself now, I gotta do it. <laughs> myself, then we're going to come to a, um, a kind of a passion that everything that's going on is because there's a new world order that we need to create, Mashiach. We need to create you know, uh, can't go back to what, what was, to the, what life that it was as we had it before. That's how God did all of this. But that only takes if we, that only will arrive when we kind of think about this and, and, and it develops a passion for um, connecting to Hashem and in, in being part of creating a, a new world order. Mashiach one. Living as in a redeemed world. Or we could also have intent by just, you know, bringing out the natural hidden love that we have in our soul, which also ultimately also wants a world order, but it won't be with the same kind of passion. You know, when you have a great passion in something, so it just shows on your investment and how much you own what you're doing. So that's one point. Another point, um, and I think this is very important, you know, because of the restrictions of social uh, distancing and that, you know, I, I have my son and daughter-in-law, and can I know her, four children that live four doors down. But we have... They don't come into the house. We see them outside. The kids come and visit. We're at the window. We wave. They wave back. And, um, you know, we talk or whatever, but at a distance. And they're not coming to our, Seder, uh, to our Seder as much as we'd love to have them. And others, all the other kids that we have here with their children are not coming to our Seder. So... And that's my situation. Others are actually going to be literally alone. Some of you might be literally alone to make your Seder. Whereas you would go to family or to be with friends, whatever. Now you're going to be alone. So that could be very depressing. Or if you have Kavana, intent, think about it, connect in a deeper way and recognize wow, God's giving me a gift. You know what the gift is? I have to own my Seder. I always went to my uh, parents. I always went to, you know, uh, my aunt and uncle, you know, who had the whole family together. And I was just a participant and not so, uh, not such an engaged participant necessarily. Now, I'm going to have to do it myself. I'm going to have to own it. I'm going to have to make it meaningful. So meditate upon that and recognize that this is a gift from God that he's giving us that we can own our Seder for the first time, perhaps in our lives. That's amazing. So uh, don't look at it in a, you know, don't look at it like an inanimate object and be dead, right? And just go through the actions of doing the Pesach Seder. Do it with a fervor. How are you going to do it with a fervor? Well, when you contemplate and think about that this is God's doing, He's giving me an opportunity that I should run my own Seder. 
So I'm doing it myself, or I'm doing it just with my spouse, or I'm just doing it with, you know, uh, my small family unit, as opposed to usually the extended family gets together. 20 people or more, they get together, you know, and I just kind of melt in the background. Well, no melting in the background. I mean, yes, you could just go through the actions, or you could really do it with great kavana. How? Recognize what an opportunity we have. Now let's make the most of it. I hope that's clear. All right. Sorry that we had some problems with our connections here, but we are connected. And Mordechai, thank you for joining. Uh, Jo. From Portugal, thank you. Andrea from, Andrew, rather, from Springfield, New Jersey. Good morning. Andrea, also from New Jersey. Good morning. Shaheen from New York. And uh, Andrea from Mississippi. Erica from Norway. Good afternoon. I hope the broadcast in the end was okay. Um, I have to work on making sure that it will continue to be okay. Nicole from Atlanta. Menachem from Montreal. All right, I think everybody else we have said hello to. All right, folks. A reminder uh, again that we're going to be putting other things together and if you want information of all the things that are happening um, private message me your email so we can keep you posted on everything um, you know other other learning opportunities especially that we're doing online so many things now so if you want to be connected with the other things I'm doing online and other uh, opportunities other things also, and not just online, but uh, they'll make just for our group. So um, again, private message me your email. And please share. As sharing is caring. I am Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from my home in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and pleasure to share with you, Tanya. Have a wonderful day.